Good afternoon. You are with the Vermont House Government Operations Committee. Uh, it is Friday. It is snowing. I am so glad you all made it here safely. Um, and thankful that we can be with a whole series of folks from Boards of Civil Authority around the state who didn't have to get in their car just to drive to Montpelier because they can Zoom here now. Um, so welcome. Uh, we have folks um, mainly from the Washington County and Lamoille County areas. Um, and, uh, and so we are going to just cruise through our list of folks who are here with us today in hopes that we can hear some feedback from them on what was proposed in H589. And I would also welcome folks um, to comment on where your town is currently districted relative to the proposed districts and um, and any other comments you would like to share with us. So let's start at the top of the list. I've got uh, Liz Schlegel, who is the Board of Civil Authority um, from Waterbury and welcome Liz. Afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you, uh, Representative Copeland Hanses. Um, so, my name is Liz Schlegel Stevens. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the chair of the Waterbury Board of Civil Authority. Um, and full disclosure, I am married to Representative Thomas Stevens of the Waterbury Chittenden District. Um, so, just making sure people know that. Here to share the opinion of the Waterbury BCA on the recommended map as proposed in H589 also known as the LAB alternate map. The map in H589 makes no changes to the existing Washington Chittenden district, which is a two member district that serves the entirety of the towns of Waterbury, Bolton, Buell's Gore and Huntington. On November 4th, 2021, the Waterbury Board of Civil Authority unanimously voted to reject the single member districts proposed in the LAB adopted map. The Waterbury BCA has no desire to subdivide this proposed two member district into two single member districts. And so the district as proposed in H589 will be reviewed by the Waterbury BCA on February 10th. And based on our past discussions, we expect that the BCA um, will uh, approve the proposed district. In our response to the LAB adopted map in November, the BCA made these points that Waterbury is well served by the two member district, that the current two member district does not deviate significantly from the ideal population numbers, why the proposed um, adopted map did. And the shared two member district with Huntington, Bolton, and Buell score has worked successfully for the past 10 years. Since splitting the district and the town, What's well, first proposed in 2011, the Waterbury BCA and residents of Waterbury have consistently advocated for a two member district. Residents feel that having access to two representatives to help them solve individual and community problems and represent the district's collective interests in the legislature is of great benefit. So the Waterbury BCA is well satisfied with the LAB alternate map as proposed in H589. And that is the opinion of the BCA. Thank you for your attention. And I'm happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you, Liz. Um, questions from committee members. All right, clear and simple. Oh, Rep. LeClaire. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, good afternoon, Liz. Um, we heard testimony from the other part of your district there, I think it was yesterday, that, that feels a little bit different than you folks do. They, they were clear about that their representatives are diligent about getting into the area, but they don't feel that they've been able to have the influence and the impact on things by staying with the current district. Um, if you weren't to go with them, would you have any suggestions of where else we would go to get your district to the right number? So we, we do completely um, respect the opinions of um, Huntington and Bolton and Bules Gore and understanding that being 
place in a district that is outside their county and school district lines does not feel natural to them. Um, the same was true, uh, you know, in the past, right? In their in their uh, in prior districts as well, and we have collectively, I think, worked very hard to make sure that when we do have to come together as a district, um, we make sure that everyone is heard equally. In terms of the asking where else to put Waterbury. I think the the key point that the Waterbury BCA you know would want me to make is that we are satisfied with the district as it is, while understanding right how our neighbors feel. In um, prior to 2011, Waterbury was districted districted with Duxbury and Huntington, and that was um, a successful partnership. And the um, key part that I, I know my colleagues on the BCA would want me to express is that cutting the community as is proposed um, in the alternate map and in prior maps is um, not acceptable for Waterbury and they would take that very seriously. Any other questions from committee members? All right, seeing none, uh, thank you, Liz. You're welcome to stick around if you'd like to listen to what other folks in the region have to say. Thank you. Next up, I have Amanda Gustin, who's the chair of the BCA in Barry City. Welcome, Amanda, and um, please share your thoughts on the redistricting plans. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for having me this afternoon. Uh, my name is Amanda K. Gustin. I'm the chair of the Board of Civil Authority for Barry City. Um, I wanted to come before the committee this afternoon to reiterate the conclusions and the vote of the Board of Civil Authority for Barry City for a redistricting plan that keeps Barry City as a single multi-member district, um, thus rejecting the plan that the Legislative Apportionment Board proposed, which would split Barry City into two single member districts. Uh, Barry City is just over four square miles, which is tiny for Vermont, and has one of the highest population densities in the state. We work very hard to build community in our place. Our recommendation to the Legislative Apportionment Board was based on both surveyed feedback from Barry City residents and a lively debate at a meeting of the Board of Civil Authority on November 4th, 2021. BCA members argued that the city is a contiguous whole and can best be represented as such. Issues that face our city do not stop at legislative lines. In addition, the proposed line between the two legislative districts, as drawn by the Legislative Apportionment Board, cut across established ward lines. Before redistricting in 2010, voters frequently expressed confusion about their two different voting districts, municipal and legislative. We did not want to place any possible obstacles on the path to voting in a city with many people who have been historically disadvantaged. Thank you for your time this afternoon. I was glad to have the chance to appear and share the conclusions of the Barry City Board of Civil Authority with this committee. Thank you very much. Questions from committee members? Seems like that was crystal clear. Thank you for being with us, Amanda. Um, Michael Saborin, uh, Justice of the Peace in Marshfield. Uh, welcome, Michael, and happy to hear your thoughts on redistricting. Yes, thank you. So I'm, I'm a Justice of the Peace, Marshfield, on the Marshfield Bill of Civil Authority. I'm here to speak in opposition to the H589 that proposes the legis legislative district, Washington 6, of encompassing Callis, Marshfield, and Pinefield, which is the current alignment of the district, but the legislative, legislative appointment board. Um, first, I, well, I'll backtrack. I'll read from my notes. It's going to be easier, easier for me. So my understanding is that this current proposal is not in line with that the, the, the legislative appointment board. I would like to also point out that the Marshall Board of Civil Authority did vote in support of the proposed redistricting redistricting by the Legislative Appointment Board, and that district would be composed of Plainfield, Marshall, and Cabot. 
And then I'm going to go on to speak of the, the, the alignment of Plainfield and Marshall and Cabot in the sense represents more of a community and it's a fact of natural community. Not that being a community is a cr criteria for redistricting, but it should be a consideration. These three towns have more in common than the previous configuration of, you know, that included cows. Marshall, Plainfield, and Cabot share proximity as well as similar population demographics. They also share in common U.S. Route 2, the Winooski River, as well as the resources of Molly Pond State Park and Associated Dam. The mail for Cabot is delivered out of Marshall by Marshall rural carriers. We, in, I live in Marshall. We do our local shopping at the Plainfield Co-op, Marshall and Cabot building stores. We obtain hardware supplies from Plainfield Hardware, Harry's Hardware Store in Cabot. We get gas at the Maplefield, the Missy's gas station in Marshall. We get our car repairs done at the Cabot garage. We get pizza at the Positive Pie in Plainfield. The schoolhouse common in Marshall serves area-wide community meals. The Twin Valley Senior Center service serves area-wide meals and wheels, wheel, meals and wheels. Grace United Church in Plainfield serves community meals and provides an area AA meeting. The Plainfield Health Center provides local health services. Local employment is provided through area stores, schools, Cabot Creamery, Goddard College, post office, et cetera. Area emergency services are provided by Cabot Ambulance and Plainfield Fire Department. The local radio station is WGDR out of uh, Goddard College in Plainfield. And then I can go on and on with various examples. And what I'm essentially trying to say is that the local community has no cause to go to Calvis for normal business or routines like you know, people, people around here in Marshall, we do, you know, we do our day-to-day -day stuff pretty much in Plainfield and Cabot, you know, in Montpelier and whatnot, but, you know, we really have, really have little to do with Calus other than being in the same legislative district. And then my final sentence is, <clears throat> why, would, why would we want to be part of a larger population base that has no natural relationship to our existing, our existing community? And thank you for letting me speak today. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, committee members, any questions for the representative from Marshfield? Uh, representative Hooper. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Michael, I understand your position of reaching out to other towns. Uh, do the people in Cabot come to Marshfield and Plainfield to do their business? Is, yeah, is, I mean, you could, yes, they do, because you have the co-op in Plainfield, you have the village store in Marshall, then you have the gas station in Marshall, where I think a lot of people go to get gas. You know? So there is something going back and forth. It's yeah, just I mean, that route, you're not route, saying you're not route, going there. Right. Route 2 passes through all three communities of Cabot, Marshall, and Plainfield, and also the Winooski River Valley affects all three communities. I mean... I mean, and 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 distance-wise, all three are within proximity. I mean, Cabot, not Cabot, but uh, you know, I did a mileage thing today, and Calus is, you know, like 14 miles away from Cabot and 12 miles away from uh, Plainfield. There is, there is really no relationship between Calus other than being in the same legislative district. You know? Thank you. Any other questions from committee members? All right, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, feel free to stick around as we jog next door to Plainfield. Jim Volz is chair of the Select Board in Plainfield. Welcome, Jim. Hello, thank you for having me. Um, uh, we have a slightly different view of this situation than Marshfield does. We have no, um, we don't have any strong ties to Cabot. We are very comfortable with our relationship with Callis. We very much like having Janet Ansel representing us, and we've been big, and we've been very pleased with with her representation. We'd like that to continue. So we feel uh, that the new district uh, we'd rather we'd rather have things stay the way they are. But if a change needs to be made due to the uh, requirements of <clears throat> reapportionment, then we would we are okay with being joined with Marshfield for that purpose. So um, we do have interests uh, th that we share with Marshfield. <clears throat> we have the Twinfield School and it's called Twinfield because it's the school for Marshfield and uh, Plainfield. So uh, there is that strong interest there. 
<clears throat> otherwise I tended to agree with, with uh, we, with, um, no, otherwise I would say we don't, the people in Plainfield don't go to Cabot uh, on a regular basis uh, for services of any kind that I'm aware of. Um, you, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer any. Thank you. Uh, committee members, any questions for the other half of the twin fields? Great, that was crystal clear. Thank you, Jim, for being with us today. Please feel free to stick around as we are continuing around your region. Um, going next to East Montpelier. Edie Miller. And we just need you to unmute yourself. Okay. There we go. Uh, there we go. Thank in you. the last two years, I should know better. Uh, thank, you, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair and um, committee members for allowing me to, to uh, represent East Montpelier. I'm a justice of the peace here, and um, the board asked me to speak on their behalf. We are here. Um, I won't take much of your time because we don't have any complaints. Um, I'm here to affirm our agreement with the alternative plan. Now, when the, the lab came out with their, um, their majority plan, we had strong disagreement because it chopped off. We are in, we are in a one member district uh, with Middlesex and currently, and uh, the new plan had, had the same thing, except it chopped off uh, 404 members of residents of East Montpelier and put them in a district, different district. So we did object pretty strongly to that um, for reasons that are outlined in writing. I, I won't, unless you want to hear them, I won't necessarily go into that. Uh, anyway, we were delighted that, that our concerns were heard and this alternative plan has uh, the entirety of both Middlesex and East Montpelier represented by one representative, and we are happy with that. So uh, essentially that's what I'm here to say. Excellent, thank you so much. That was crystal clear um, and we appreciate it. Committee members, any questions for the <coughs> representative from East Montpelier? Glad they're happy. Yes, that's a good thing. All right, thank you for being with us today and please feel free to stick around. Thank you very much. Next, we have a pair of gentlemen named Paul Malone and White from Barrytown. I'm not sure which one or both of you were planning to speak, but I will let you two signal who you're, okay, go right ahead. That looks like uh, Paul Malone. Yeah. Yes, my name is Paul Malone. Everybody can hear me all right? Yes, we can. Thank you. Fantastic. I am the chair of the Barrytown uh, Board of Civil Authority. Everybody wanted me to talk. They figured I must like the Chief Justice. I said, Jesus, not the Supreme Court, but I'll do my best. I just want to refer to uh, Title 17 of Vermont Statutes and Chapter 11 of the Vermont Constitution, which allows for a two-member district in the House of Representatives. Barrytown has been a two-member district since 1980. The Board of Civil Authority uh, strongly believes this configuration has served Barrytown residents exceedingly well for more than four decades. The town's population has remained stable for the past decade, and um, all facets of the town governance structure recognizes of uh, the municipality as a single entity. Maintaining a single town-wide district ensures the equitable representation of the town's common interests. Examples of this would be our public safety, our roads, our infrastructures, our education funding, and economic uh, stability. The BCA has uh, recommended that the single district two-member representation be maintained. Issues with the multi-town district uh, exasperated with uh, Barrytown's configuration of the map being joined with orange creates another multi-town district. Examples of that could be when we look at populations, we see that uh, in Barrytown, which has a population of 
7,923. When we add in orange, we go to a plus 4.63% deviation, where currently we are at a minus 7.5% deviation. If we add in, uh, and if we uh, um, leave um, orange with the current uh, scenario, that uh, creates kind of a uh, lesser than uh, expected uh, 5.78% deviation. If, if orange were, were to come out, I'm going to correct myself on one thing. If orange were to be placed with Barrytown, that particular district would wind up with a greater deviation than what we have with Barrytown by itself. I would point out to the committee that there are other two sister communities that are in our general area. Barry City right now has a population of about A491. It's pretty much close to spot on. It's uh, about 150 uh, individuals underneath what would be the ideal at 8574. Uh, Montpelier, which has uh, been recommended to stay as a two member district has about 8,074 uh, individuals in it, or uh, a negative 5.83% deviation. So when we look at our 7.59 uh, minus deviation, we're well within that area. I think by changing and applying orange to our area it does a couple other things. One is the representation of those folks in orange would probably be less served because a population of 1,000 in that particular community being combined with almost 8,000 in Barrytown, it's pretty unlikely that they will have direct representation just by the sheer numbers of voting population. I don't think Orange wants that. We, we reached out to those folks and they said they liked where they were. Uh, we feel the same way as, as our board is concerned and we think that based upon the locales of these two communities and the mountainous regions that we're in, there really isn't a lot of commonness between the two communities other than we have a borderline that's on a high ridge somewhere uh, heading towards the uh, Southeast. Any questions? Many members, any questions for the member reporting out Barry Town? Representative LaFave. Thank you very much, Mr. Merlin, for testifying. Um, from the member of Orange, um, we would like to stay with what we are, but given the opportunity between the two maps, we did decide we'd want to go with you guys. Um, just to clarify, um, I, I am the member of the BCA there, and just to clarify that, we, we would want to go with you over other opportunities that were given. Um, but yes. Overall, we'd like to stay the same, but unfortunately, we know that that won't happen. So just to clarify, we uh, Barry Town would be our first choice of where Orange would go. May I respond to that? Uh, you may respond to that, yes. We've, we've received mixed messages from Orange, uh, including the uh, Orange Town Clerk. Uh, we, we want to reach out to as many people as party uh, as possible as we did within our own community. It was a strong debate. Um, our our uh, particular governing structure that we have within our BCA is that we have uh, an understanding where we have a divided board by intention, which is made up currently of eight Democrats and seven Republicans. And uh, Everyone across that particular spectrum seemed to agree that this would be better to remain this way. Um, I think that it, uh, the, the numbers will speak for themselves ultimately, but um, I question what kind of representation Orange would actually have. Um, and also, there was one other tidbit that I left out and it had to deal with the actual census itself. We were a little bit puzzled by the census is not having really changed. And I, we checked into that and we didn't know how complete that census really was. What we found that was very interesting was that we have right now, based upon the census number and our registered voters, we seem to be slightly over 80% of all citizens in this community being 80% registered. 
Um, that seems kind of high when we looked at all the surrounding towns around us. Uh, so I don't know if the census uh, may have had some deficiency in it, but I'm sure the legislature has figured some way around that. Well, I wish that there was some way around that, um, but we are bound by the statute that requires us to base our um, district lines on the decennial census and those official numbers. Um, uh, I think, I think in most parts of the state seem to be r roughly accurate, but. Um, you know, you folks on the ground uh, may may believe differently about the count as it impacted your community, but we don't have a lot of latitude. And and uh, so I, I think the only other thing that I would ask you is, um, since Berrytown is a little bit small uh, in terms of population to remain a, a two seat district, um, what other configurations of adding, you know, some some bodies, if you will, to your district would um, would make sense to you? Looking at the geographic area coming out of Berlin, which is one of the communities that surround us, uh, looking at Orange is another one, Plainfield, um, really doesn't seem to make sense in any kind of configuration. When you say that our numbers are a little bit smaller. There again, I've got to bounce back to Montpelier. I mean, we've got about a population that's about 140, 150 different than theirs. Um, I don't see any resectioning out in, in that particular area. This is just what the general census was of the community leaders and particularly the Board of Civil Authority, which looked at this very, very closely. This is where we feel we should stay. Um, and that's our opinion. Thank you. Com committee members, any other questions? Oh, so. uh, Representative Dijovsky. Uh Madam Chair, I actually have a point of clarification for you or maybe someone else on the committee. I'm just trying to remember, Ooh. we are trying to stay under 7% deviation, correct? So plus five or minus five is generally the, the target range for an overall 10% deviation. Um, and there have been times in the past that Vermont's districts have extended beyond plus five or minus five, um, but it's a good thing to aim for, and um, and and it you know is sort of the first the first cut, and then the rest of the statutory criterion um, coming along behind that. Okay, I'm not sure where plus seven was ringing in my brain, or plus or minus seven was ringing in my brain, though perhaps that was that measure of constitutionality. No, it's the f plus or minus five that that has, um, has is presumed to be, and maybe you know how to say this better than I do. No, under 10% is assumed to be constitutional, but you have to be able to rationalize a district that's higher. Yeah, if you have a district that's either larger or smaller than plus or minus five, um, you know, you gotta, gotta and, be able to rationalize that. And, and the other issue is if you were settling on 10% deviation for all your districts, then your overall deviation, assuming you had somebody at t plus 10% and someone at negative 10%, that would give your overall deviation of 20% which the United States Supreme Court has said is of questionable constitutionality. Right, thanks for clarifying that for me. Representative LeClaire. Um, thank you, Madam Chair, and um, thank you, Mr. Malone and Mr. White. Um, as much as I recognize that we are looking to have the 5% deviation high or low, uh, you're right that if we're under the 10% number, at least from a constitutional perspective, that hasn't seemed to have gotten challenged. But if I remember correctly, the deviation for the overall plan in the state for 2012 was what, almost 18%? Almost 19%. Almost 19%. So there's precedent to show that as much as we're trying to work with that 5%, that there is some room for deviation where it's appropriate. 
Any other questions from committee members? Oh, sorry. Uh, Representative LaFaith. Um, thank you very much. Um, how would Barrytown feel um, about any division um, or separation of the town if you know part of the town was to be taken to maybe supplement somewhere else? I think that would, that, that would make our uh, our deviation um, worse. I'll, I'll let Paul White speak. He's the chair board, chair of the select board. Welcome, Mr. White. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Paul White. I'm the chair of the select board in Barrytown, as mentioned. And um, I'll be brief because Mr. Malone covered most of it. But to answer the question uh, asked by Representative Lefebvre, I think uh, the, rep the residents of Barrytown would be strongly opposed to having a part of our town chiseled away and, and grouped with some other district. Um, as Paul mentioned before, you know, Barrytown has been a standalone two member at large district for 40 years. We think it's worked very well. We certainly no offense intended to our good neighbors in Orange. Um, you know, Representative LeClaire had made a point earlier in the talking about the Waterbury district about uh, how speaking of Bolton, Huntington and Buell's Gore, how they feel that they are maybe perhaps overlooked since the population center is in Waterbury. What we're doing here with grouping Barrytown and Orange is creating a similar situation where, you know, the, the population of Barrytown is seven and a half times that of Orange. And I understand uh, Representative Lefebvre's comment that, that they are would like to join with us and we certainly don't want to um, shun them. But uh, if you look at uh, the comment was made about our numbers being a little too small to be a standalone district. If Barrytown was left to itself as we currently are, the deviation would be between seven and a half and 7.6% to the minus. However, if you look at the proposed new orange one, which I believe is where orange currently sits prior to redistricting, that proposed orange one has a deviation of minus 7.78. So we're actually creating a worse situation. Uh, I believe if, if orange was left in orange one with its neighboring towns of Williamstown, Washington, uh, Corinth, Chelsea, and Berkshire, that everyone would be a little bit closer to zero than what is being proposed. Um, and I guess I will just finish with um, everybody that I've talked to, whether it's members of the BCA, members of the town, uh, I haven't spoken with a single person who has not been of the opinion that they would like to see Barrytown remain as it has been for 40 years as a standalone two member at large district. Um, and Looking back to what was recommended by the LAB, where Barrytown was divided into two single member districts, uh, we are very much opposed to that as well. Um, as was mentioned uh, by the Barry City speaker, uh, Barrytown is very much one community. There is really no difference between the north side of town and the south side of town. In drawing an arbitrary line uh, to create two single member districts would really be counterproductive in our opinion. And thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for being with us. Any other questions from committee members? All right, uh, seeing none, um, next I think I would love to zoom up to Belvedere and uh, have a conversation with Kathy Mander Adams. Um, Kathy, you are the town clerk in Belvedere. That is correct. I am the town clerk in the beautiful town of Belvedere, Vermont. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak with you. Um, I'm hoping that most of you know where Belvedere is. Um, thank you. The Belvedere um, Board of Civil Authority did meet back at the end of October. We did submit our comments uh, and certainly appreciate the opportunity to um, review and renew our um, recommendation to the board. Uh, as I said in my survey that I filled out in November, uh, having the consensus of the Belvedere Board of Civil Authority, um, we were comfortable with the adopted plan that was submitted. 
Um, the suggestion that Belvedere can combine with Johnson and Waterville is an advantage to Belvedere. As we are combined with these towns um, through school and family activities. Well, the alternate plan, which of course is the original uh, plan, uh, keeps us with the same towns and we do share the same school. Um, and we're not unhappy with the configuration the way it is. But Bel uh, Waterville is, we have to pass through Waterville to do anything. And Waterville currently is not part of our district. Um, so that would be an advantage to us if we could be in a same member district with Waterville. Yes, we participate in a lot of things with that town, but again, we're all in the same county. We also utilize community services within those towns. Belvedere feels a two representative district is a greater advantage to Belvedere when our representatives do not live in our town. However, if we stay connected to Waterville and Johnston, we feel a greater connection will exist. In other words, our preference is to stay the way we are. <laughs> we're, not, we're not uncomfortable with the adopted map because it brings us closer <gasps> to Waterville. You can't change the connection through any of this. Uh, you can't change our connection with Waterville. We will continue to be close neighbors with Waterville and do a lot of things together. However, again, the, the committee feels that the way we are now is our preference, but we could live with the adopted map. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much for letting me speak. Thank you so much for being here and uh, representing the town of uh, Belvedere. Committee members, any questions? All right, crystal clear. That is excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we had on our agenda a, a representative of the town of Eden, and I don't see her at the moment, um, but we will skip over her and come back if she arrives before we take a break. Um, so now we would like to hear again from the town of Huntington and Heidi Rapp is with us. Uh, Heidi, welcome. Hi, thank you very much um, for hearing me again. I thought I'd hit both counties because we seem to be split here. Um, so I thought in the interest of um, uh, giving a more cohesive presentation, um, as I said to our BCA yesterday, I would not win the Best Actress Academy Award, but at least I'm on the record. So I'd like to um, read my letter to Tom Little that was written on behalf of the BCA in November. Um, much of that was paraphrased in January to our representatives and senators. Dear Mr. Little and Legislative Apportionment Board, the Board of Civil Authority of the Town of Huntington thanks you for the work that you have put on the legislative and senatorial districts for our state. We are most pleased that we are having your support for our request for representation in our county and that is Chittenden County. Toward this end, we would like to address the two districts that were discussed at our meeting on November 1st. Number one, we applaud your efforts to create a balance of the populations of the towns that would be in the Chittenden Waterbury District. So that would be Chittenden Washington District by creating a district that includes two small towns and a gore. Huntington, Buell's Gore, and Bolton, and part of a larger town, Waterbury. As we said in the previous letter to you last February, we have been underrepresented in the Vermont House since 1980, and this is 40 years, having been placed with Waterbury in Washington County, where the geographic and cultural disparities have been large. While we have enjoyed fairly keen representatives who have recognized the weight of our voter block, we have not had a representative from Huntington in the Vermont legislature since 1965. And despite an opening in the Vermont House in 2011 due to Sue Minter's change of career, 
the appointment made by the governor was the Waterbury candidate. And Tom Stevens, who has been, and Teresa Wood have both been excellent representatives. So it's nothing personal or anything like that. And I will say that this is a 10 year arrangement and I would be surprised if either of them are still with us in 10 years. And in terms of being in the legislature, hopefully they'll still be with us. So, um, <laughs> so um, we strongly support the single representative Washington, uh, Chittenden, Washington representative district proposed on the map drawn by Jeremy Hansen and Robert, Rob Roper on October 13, 2021 and approved by the board for submission to the BCAs. And so then we had this whole other thing with um, the senatorial districts uh, because um, at the 11th hour last time, um, we, were, we, were, we would say we were complacent. Um, we thought because we were already in a district outside of our county that we wouldn't be um, put into a, another county for the senatorial district. And so we have had um, 10 years of uh, Addison representation and um, the, the um, senators have been fine. They've been great. Um, we have gotten a lot of attention from them. So there's no complaints there. In fact, I did, um, did some research before we were put in Addison and realized that after, um, you probably know all these people, Doug Racine, Sally Conrad, and George Little all stopped being in the Senate. Um, we didn't see anyone here for nine years in our town as legally um, representing the Senate. And we used to see a lot of Dennis Delaney too. Um, the man could be in 10 places at once and he was always here. So we support a two member senatorial district similar as discussed at the BCA meeting of the five towns of the Mount Mansfield district at which Tom Little was in attendance. So that was organized by the town of Jericho. Um, the goal there was to have the five towns in the merged Mount Mansfield district have the same senators. Um, that isn't exactly what happened, but we are with at least one of the towns in our school district. And we are also with Heinsburg and um, other other towns, and we are um, happier about that to be in, in the county. So we thank them for their efforts on this too. And the BCA had consensus that the maps you provided on the Secretary of State's website are significantly better than our current situation in the Addison District. In fact, we like all proposals better than our current Senate districting. And we would get back to the lab with our BCA's official Senate preference in the future, which um, we didn't do because um, it moved pretty fast. So then we cut over and started writing to our senators and representatives. And a lot of it was the same language. But um, I would like to just say that um, we have been on this. We have um, Mr. Little has been very um, kind to us because we've been on this for a year, over a year with him, calling him. Uh, showing up at the meetings when when they had them, um, thank God for Zoom, and um, responding. You know, he came to that meeting that was the Mount Mansfield School District and heard what everyone had to say, and then went away and um, you know heard us. And so I would like I would like you to hear us too. And to get back to the um, uh, legislative district again, there's there's no complaints about our two. Democratic representatives, um, but we have run candidates from this town in, in the past, and if they are a Democrat, they never get past the primary to get on the ballot. Thank you. You have any questions, committee members? Any questions for the member from Huntington? So I, I guess I have a question. If you um, if you had to talk about the um, natural alliances and ties between Huntington and any of your neighbors to the west or north, um, how would you describe um, where Huntington feels more connected? Um, we have um, great ties to Richmond and to Hinesburg. 
um, that's a natural uh, commuting direction as, as long as we're talking about the county. And um, Bolton, you know, if someone is working in Montpelier or Waterbury, they would go through Bolton. But part of what is going on with our town is we've had um, a couple centuries of isolation here because it's um, a, a completely, um, it, it's the kind of town where you can get from any point in the town without having to leave the town because it's all in one valley, which makes us a little isolated. So to, to get anywhere else, we actually have to go to another town. And for before we were put in with Waterbury, we were with Heinsberg and we had Henry Kars for our representative and um, Mr. Kars owned property in town and you know, was aware of the dynamics of our town. So um, you know, we, we go to Heinsberg, we go to um, Richmond and not so much um, any place else. I mean, the Bolton part of it is much better because it used to be um, Waterbury and Duxbury. And, you know, we share that uh, commonality with Duxbury in that we claim the top of Camel's Hump, but they're pretty close to it. So um, you can't really get there from here unless you hike, hike up and over. And otherwise, you're driving through two towns to get to Waterbury. And so we, we would like to be with someone who's adjacent to us. And Bolton, we're still going through Richmond, but it is, it is closer and it is the same school district. So and the same county. <laughs> right, right. Um, does, does Huntington sort of identify as, you know, I'm from the West Valley and you're from the East Valley? You, you know, do, do folks, um, you, you mentioned that your town, you know, runs, uh, runs up and down a valley. So does that feel Oh, like you mean in terms of splitting the town? Um, what I have personally noticed, um, having lived in the town here for um, 45 years or so, is that, um, you know, if you're on the southern end of town, you might tend to go commute south if you're leaving town. And if you're on the northern end of town, you would probably commute north. Um, and so there's a little bit of that. But overall, it's a, it's a pretty cohesive town because you don't have to leave to go any place to get to one point uh, from one point to the other in the town. We're all in this valley together. And so it's unlike there's a part of Starksboro where they actually have to come in through part of Bristol and then up through the Gore and into Huntington into Hanksville actually, and then go up into the little um, spur of Starksboro. So, um, that's kind of a disconnected corner. And thankfully we don't have any of those disconnections here. Yeah. Yes, I can see that on the map. <laughs> yeah. um, any other questions from committee members? All right, uh, thank you so much for being with us. Okay, thank you.